This short video is about creating a group frequency table and from that finding the mean and then finding the cumulative frequency so we can plot a cumulative frequency curve and find the median from that curve. So the data I'm going to use in this video is taken from a textbook, exercise 145, page 365, question number three, and you can see the data here. The first thing to do is to decide um, the range of the data we've got. So we can decide on the group sizes. And we're going to split this into around about six groups. So we find the smallest value, which is 20.5, and the highest, which is 23.4. So we need to decide on the groups that we're going to put in. So we design our table. And the first column is going to be the group. And then what we need to do is decide, OK, we're going to go from 20.5, which is the lowest point, up to 21, really. But what we're actually going to say is, OK, we're going to go up to 20.9 on this one. So we're going up as high as 21, but not including 21. So the next group is going to start at 21 and go up to 21.4. The following group is going to go up from 21.5 to 21.9, and so on. So 22.0 to 22.4, 22.5 up to 22.9, and then 23 up to 23.5, and that will include the highest value that we've got. <coughs> when we've done that, we need to have a number that represents x that represents the midpoint of the group and that's then going to represent the data in this particular group to find the midpoint what i normally do is to go from the lowest point in the first group to the start of the next group and find the midpoint between those two so 20.5 up to 21 20.75 20, um, we could go from 20.5 up to 20.9 if we're only going up to 20.9 and there's no possibility of getting anything between 20.9 and 21 we could use the midpoint between those two and in some ways that's probably the easiest one to take because it's a nice whole number so or only one decimal place so 20.7 21.2 midpoint of that group and so on 22.2 22.7 uh, 23.2 to keep it consistent. There's always some debate about what number to take as the midpoint of the group, but so long as you're consistent in what you decide to do, then um, that will be fine. Now we've done that, we need to decide on the values how many there are in each group, the frequency. So we create a tally table. where we take each of the values and then put in our five bar gate system. So I would recommend you always cross them out as you're going. So the first piece of data is 21. So that's going to go in this group, the group from 21 to 21.4. The next one is 22.4. That goes in this group and so on. So I continued that and uh, on the next slide, you can see I filled in all the data and put it into the table. So now we can generate the frequency. So add up the numbers in the tally column. 3, 10, 11, 13, 9, and 2. So there's the frequency. Now, so this is a grouped frequency table, and it allows us to find the mean. If you think about what the mean is, so if we write the formula for the mean underneath, the mean is given by the sum of fx divided by the sum of f. So fx, if we look at our columns here, the frequency, which is this column here, and x, which is the midpoint of the group. So what we're actually saying is, if you think about the mean, we've got to add up all the values. So we've got three values of 20.7. So we've got 10 
values of 21.2 and so on. So we just multiply them together to add up all the numbers. So we generate an fx column, and in that column, we multiply the numbers together. So three lots of 20.7 is 60 plus 2.1, so 62.1, and so on. So multiply the frequency by x to complete the column, which I've done, and here it is. So now, remember what we're after is the mean, which is the sum of the fx, so it's the sum of that column, divided by the sum of f. And in here you can see I've had to complete these columns and worked out what the, su <coughs> the sum of fx is, which is this value here, and the sum of f. So to get the mean, I just divide 1052.1 by 48, and that will give me the mean value. And this comes to 21.9. So we can say that the mean of this data is 21.9. The next topic on this video is to generate the cumulative frequency curve. So we need the cumulative frequency, which is when we add up the frequency as we're going along. So the first, this frequency, cumulative frequency column here, the first value in this column will be 3. And then we add the next value. 3 plus 10 is 13. 13 plus 11 is 24. And in that way, we generate the cumulative frequency. 24, 37, 46 plus 2 is 48. So, in fact, we end up with a total frequency at the bottom, 48. Now we need to plot this on a graph. So, what we're going to plot is the cumulative frequency on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we plot the extreme value of the group. So in this case, we can go to 20.9, or maybe the extreme value of this first group we, we can consider to be the start of the next group. Why do we do this? Well, the cumulative frequency allows us to say how many bits of data uh, are a certain value or less. For example, if we look at the first group, this 3 in the cumulative frequency column tells us you've got 3 pieces of data with a value of 20.9 or less. 21, no, 20.9 or less, isn't it? Because 21 will go in the next group. If we look at the next value in the cumulative frequency column, because we've added them up, we can now say that 13 pieces of data have a value of 21.4 or less, because it includes both groups, and so on. 24 pieces of data have a value of 21.9 or less. So what we plot on the cumulative frequency curve is the cumulative frequency on the y-axis and the extreme value of the group on the x-axis. So let's go ahead now and try and generate those values and plot them on the graph. Okay, so here's our table and underneath I put a set of axes that I've generated on a piece of graph plotting software called Autograph and you should use that or you could just use ordinary graph paper. So to decide on the scales, the cumulative frequency has to go up to a value of 48. So you can see that on the y-axis, I'm going up to around about 50, 55. And the group size needs to start at, at least 20.5 and go up to 23.5. So going from 20.5 up to about 23.5 on the x-axis. And you can see that here. So we only need to include the axes on the scale. On the x-axis, there's no need to start at zero. So now we put the values on. So we're, we're going uh, along the x-axis up to 20.9 and up the y-axis to 3. So along the axis to 20.9 and up to 3 takes us to this point here on the, on the graph the plot is slightly out because of the screen, and so on. And put, you put the values on, all the values from the scale. 
plots of now plot of the other values on here, and if you compare the point to the table, I think you'll be able to follow what I've done there. We're plotting the um, cumulative frequency against the extreme value of the group. So this one, 22.9, and across to um, 45. 46. <coughs> so now we've put, got our points on, we plot a smooth curve through the points. And here's our cumulative frequency curve, or our cumulative frequency O guide, sometimes called an O guide. Now, what we have here is a representation of the data in order, starting with the lowest value, going up to the highest value on the x-axis. So if you think about the idea of the median, that's the middle value. And because we've plotted against the extreme value in the group, remember what we were saying about these groups, this number 40, 37 is telling me 37 pieces of data lie at a value of 22.4 or less. So if I want to find the median, that's the halfway point. So if I've got 48 pieces of data, it so happens for this particular example that the 24th piece of data is exactly on one of these points. And so, to find the median, I go to the halfway point on the cumulative frequency graph. So if my extreme value is 48, I go to the 24th value, which is here, and then I draw a line across, to the cumulative frequency curve, and it, as we've said, that actually coincides with one of our points, and then we go down, and so now we can say that the median is a value of 21.9. We can read it exactly from the scale. And for normally distributed data, or evenly distributed data, we should find that the averages come to be roughly the same and the mean actually turned out to be 21.9 as well. So unless the data is very skewed, we should find that the averages are roughly the same. We can do other things with this, with this cumulative frequency as well, just to finish this little video off. If I want to know how many pieces of data, for example, uh, are less than 22.5 units long, if it's a length, then I go to the 22.5 point and draw a line up to my cumulative frequency curve and then across and I can say 36 or 35 pieces of data are 22.5 units long or less and so on. I want to know how many pieces of data are 15 units long or less. I go to the um, 15, sorry, if I want to know the length of the lowest 15 pieces of data for example, I go to the 15 point, cross and down, and I can say the bottom 15 pieces of data <coughs> have a length of 21.6, something like that, 21.7 or less. So the cumulative frequency curve is useful for things like that.